Baijus emerged as among India's most valuable unicorn startups after it ended in 2021 with a valuation of over 22 billion US dollars, which is also enough to rank it among the largest in the entire world. And if Baijus was ever listed on the public stock exchange, it would be ranked around the 30 to 40s as the largest company in India and probably the largest educational technology or edtech company in the entire world. This is driven primarily because of the market that Baijus operates in. After all, education is among the biggest in the entire world, and specifically, the ad tech market is valued at around $254 billion as of 2021, which will grow to over $605 billion by 2027. This helped the enterprise to be among Time's 2021 top 100 most influential companies around the globe, which by all means shows how much Baijus is impacting not just India, but all around. Furthermore, it even triumphs over the largest American-based edtech firms such as Coursera, Udacity, and Udemy. So how did Baijus become the edtech capital of the world? Before we move on, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe for more. Baiju's emergence began because of two individuals, who are known as Baiju Ravindran and Divya Gokunat. At the start of their operations in 2008, their product offering was video-based learning programs for students. This enabled the youth to have an alternative type of learning, where education isn't just limited to the walls of a classroom, which was fundamentally the need for change in the world of education, as leaders and voices around the world were calling for it. By 2012, the company was growing, so much so that it landed among the top 500 fastest-growing startups in the entire Asia-Pacific. And during these times, the edtech market wasn't much talked about. The internet in India wasn't as big as it is today, and video-based programs such as YouTube were still starting to take off. So a fast-growing startup that has yet to see the potential of the entire market meant that the executives really had great execution within the business. By 2018, the company has then received several investments from prominent investors around the world, from Sequoia Capital India to Tencent to Sofina and Lightspeed Venture Partners. Most importantly, however, is that one of the backers was Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg's philanthropic initiative called the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. In the same year, Baijus entered the Unicorn Club 2018, which meant that the startup is now valued at over $1 billion. Surprisingly, it was only a decade after that the firm became a decacorn, meaning a $10 billion business. And today, Baijus has taken off with a $22 billion valuation, meaning its valuation exploded in just four short years since 2018. Moreover, it's not even a public company, which as we have seen in recent years tends to have its valuation take off. Currently, it has operations not just in India, but across 21 other countries globally and has over 12,000 teachers with programs in 11 languages. And what has brought Baiju to become such a large edtech business is kind of debatable, but we think it is because of its first-in-the-market style business, which means that it was among the first-ever startups in the market. This helped them pave its brand and their people. Further, Baiju's headquartered country, which is India, may have also helped them see the need for providing accessible education to everyone, as this has been segmented further with India's role as an IT hub of the world, which meant that innovation is necessary for anything we do, and so is in the education system. Our opinion is kind of aligned with Baiju's overall mission, which is envisioning the future education, having everyone access it, and empowering the ecosystem. Its role going from a $22 billion business to maybe $100 billion lies in its pure execution and growing acquisitions it has done. Baijus has been on a rapid pace on buying up several businesses across the world for them to enter certain markets. Among its largest acquisitions is Tinker, a coding platform for students based in the US, which it bought off for $200 million in 2021. Epic, another US-based education firm which is bought for a staggering half a billion dollars, and Topper for $600 million. These acquisitions are more than likely a lot. In total, it had acquired 16 edtech or related firms which totaled more than billions of dollars. Furthermore, it has partnered with some of the best organizations worldwide after it joined with firms such as Intel, Disney, and other major corporations. These have enabled Baijus to have a brand that now stands among the best in the world. It is even among the official sponsors of large events such as the FIFA World Cup, the ICC Cricket, 
of which one of the teams named Team India is also a sponsor of Baijus. These have enabled Baijus to thrive in the past, present, and its future role as the world's edtech software. Although the rise of a software company, especially very fast, is going to receive criticism. Well, after all, its valuation skyrocketing meant that business is booming, which in part is also thanks to the rapid increase of users during the COVID lockdowns. But this rapid growth is going to be hard to manage, which is a key moment of failure for companies who grow too quickly. Thankfully, Baiju seems to have handled the pressure. Yet, however, it still has several problems that came along with it. Some of the problems we have identified is first, Baiju's valuation may have gone too far. Take a look at the recent Indian startups that have gone public, meaning who went on to sign their company to the stock exchange. Paytm, who saw its valuation reach a peak of $15 billion and only to fall to its lowest around $4.6 billion. Valuation is not always a good sign that the company is doing well, especially in the world of private equity, where executives tend to oversell their company in order to raise cash. The company has even announced as of recently that it is trying to list the entire company through a special purpose acquisition company, or SPAC for short, and is speculated to be based across national borders all the way to the New York Stock Exchange. For an approximately valuation of over $48 billion, which makes a startup far more valuable than what it was before its planned IPO. But is it really worth this much? Could it follow the same path Paytm is going to go through? Well, that's not even the only problem. The company still needs to go through a lot of regulatory hurdles within its nation borders. But if it does indeed go through this path, it may emerge as the biggest SPAC deal to date, far surpassing the world's largest, either from Western Giants or Eastern, more than the current historical breaker Grab, a super app in Southeast Asia who has done so with $40 billion. Moreover, the other issue that came along with this is some criticism about its work culture and even its product offerings at times. According to Glassdoor, where current and former employees can rate their companies anonymously, saw that far more issues are raised rather than great reviews. These issues are varied, but one that we saw the most is stated to be because of long work hours and a lack of work-life balance, which probably was a result of recent demand for Baiju's products which meant that employees and its executives need to accommodate to the unprecedented rise of customers. This emphasizes their occasional growth for hunger problem, which is often denoted by some of its customers as the company tends to mislead their products. And these are not the only problems that Baiju's has. There are likely more out there, but we can't really say much about it mainly because every company in the world has, after all, problems of their own. What stands clear, however, is that Baiju's rose against all odds to become the global ad tech software.